clearly we've got to aim to be a major European player. Uh, Europe affects a lot of what we do, um, a lot of how we operate. Um, so I think it's important that um, we interact well with our partners um, in Europe. Um, to ensure that Europe goes in the direction that we believe it ought to go. Um, it's, it's clear that there are a number of stresses in Europe at the moment that um, hopefully won't adverse, um, affect us too adversely, but it does look a little bit uncomfortable at the moment. As far as our position in the world, um, I think we're um, on the edge of the uh, first division in terms of our capability of um, acting as a world player. Um, we have the experience, um, we have some of the technology, um, but we don't have the size and we no longer have the financial assets necessary to be a major world player. And, uh, with, um, uh, China, India, the United States, um, Russia, the ones that have large natural and human resources that we can't match. And it may be that if we want to be world players, the only way we can be world players is through Europe. James. There is a major balance of power shift happening, and power is moving from the Western developed world towards China and Southeast Asia. And I think it's something that we will look back on uh, and think the 1990s to 2020 was the time when it happened. Um, the United Kingdom has a vital role at the moment as a member of the permanent, uh, as a permanent member of the Security Council, as a member of the Commonwealth, as a member of all sorts of different organisations, including NATO. And yet we cannot any longer afford to give as much into those organisations as we have the strategic defense review is going to require us to take some really difficult decisions. Although I think all the parties will protect defense spending until after the strategic defense review is finished, uh, we cannot afford both Trident and the aircraft carriers and to have 10,000 troops in Afghanistan and to try to maintain an ability to work alongside the United States whose technology is so much advanced on ours. And so, I believe that we are going to have to reduce what we do in the world. We are going to have to accept that we cannot be a world power. We have to concentrate at the moment on getting our economy right once we've got our economy right, we can then rebuild our global influence. At the moment, we can't. Thank you. Good. Me. Well, I believe, UK believes, that we must get out of the EU. We must stop them telling us what to do all the time. Um, there's so much bureaucratic paperwork that's come through, that it's just ridiculous. We're paying them more and more money, which we can't afford to do. Um, the only way we see forward is to get out of the EU. You know, Switzerland does it. They, they're perfectly fine. You know, why can't we? Right, well, there are several issues here. I mean, you, you could spend all night discussing this particular thing. Um, there has to be global cooperation because the problems that we face are global in nature. 
Um, for example, acting on um, international terrorism, the reason why we managed to catch the suspects of the July 21 bombing was the European arrest warrant, and that is made possible through cooperation with the EU. Um, acting on climate change, because if we don't do something about climate change and cooperate with other countries to reduce emissions, including China, um, we're not going to be able to arrest what is going on in the, in the developing world. Because certainly in Africa, Darfur, I would say, that conflict is a result or the first um, war that was created by climate change because people are fighting over dwindling resources. And the consequence of people, um, of water levels rising in Bangladesh, um, of the conflict in Darfur, is you have increased immigration to this country. So there's economic consequences as well. So we have to work with other countries, cajole, negotiate, and agree common strategies. We cannot do things in isolation. This is where I strongly agree to disagree with UKIP here. We're not like that uh, power that Britain used to be in the 19th century, where it went to Africa and claimed resources, mineral wealth, etc., and so on. And certainly my ancestors did that, because they're originally from um, England uh, way, way back. And the thing is, is that what's happening at the moment is that China, there's an economic colonialism, <coughs> that's what I call going on in Africa, where they are buying up mineral rights and resources and not asking questions about governments. <coughs> so unless we're involved in those negotiations and making sure that there is that sort of governance, we're going to have problems. The last thing I want to say is that in terms of dealing with China and making sure that we are competitive with it, we must... Um, you do have the power to decide whether to buy goods made in China or not. And then that is when China will start making changes in its own.